Every time you've held a magnet in your hands, it always had a north pole and a south pole. You can visualize where the poles are using ferrofluid because the spikes in the ferrofluid point toward the pole. Have you ever thought of what it would be like if you could get that north pole away from the south pole? So maybe if you break your magnet in half, and now I have my north pole over here and my south pole over here, can I do that? Well, it turns out that at the place where the material broke, it made a new south pole down below, and over here at my south pole, it made a new north pole up top. So no matter how many times I try to get the North Pole away from the South Pole, I just can't do it. It always generates a new North Pole and South Pole pair to take its place. This is why every magnet you've ever held in your hand has a North Pole and a South Pole. Two poles make what's called a dipole, two poles. But physicists have long theorized that there could be out there in the universe some fundamental particle that is a North Pole all by itself, or a South Pole all by itself. And these would be called magnetic monopoles. Mono, pole, meaning one, pole. The idea goes back to the physicist Paul Dirac, who explained to us how it is that the existence of even one magnetic monopole anywhere in the universe leads to what's called charge quantization. In the quantum world, things are quantized. Quantized just means countable in whole numbers. Like the number of unopened energy drinks in your refrigerator has to be a whole number. In here, we have one, two, three, four, and five unopened quantum quenchers. So for example, every time we find charge on an isolated fundamental particle, it's always by the same amount. The electron has 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs of negative charge. A proton has 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs of positive charge. And the same thing for every isolated fundamental particle we've ever found. Why this happens is a mystery. But the existence of even one magnetic monopole anywhere in the universe would explain it. Now, we've looked, okay? Lots of scientists have spent a lot of time looking for this supposed magnetic monopole, and so far, no one's found one. Does it exist? We don't know. We haven't found one out in the wild, but scientists have discovered a way to create magnetic monopoles inside of quantum materials. And how is that possible? Well, inside of a quantum material, it's like a whole new universe we would say that it has a different quantum vacuum state. That just means its lowest energy state. The lowest energy state inside of a quantum material is different from the quantum vacuum state of the nothingness of outer space. And so these quantum materials, these new little universes in which magnetic monopoles have been found, they're called quantum spin ice. They're called ice in analogy with the regular ice cubes that are in your glass of ice water. Inside of an ice cube, there are oxygens and there are hydrogens. Two hydrogens for each oxygen. The oxygens are sitting on the corners of tetrahedra, these triangular pyramid structures. And at the center of each tetrahedron is another oxygen. The hydrogens sit right in between the oxygens. However, they don't like to sit exactly in the middle. That's a little bit like a ball sitting at the top of a hill. It wants to roll one way or the other. So the hydrogen always moves a little bit closer to one oxygen. And it turns out that every oxygen has near it two hydrogens that have moved a little closer in and two hydrogens that have moved a little farther away. That's called the two in, two out rule of ice or the ice rules. And in their lowest energy state, your ice cubes have that two in, two out rule satisfied. But there are a lot of ways to satisfy the ice rules. So in ice, there are many, many different configurations that are all in that same lowest energy state. Spin ice is very similar. Let's take a closer look at one of the quantum spin ices, dysprosium titanate. Here, the atoms of the rare earth metal dysprosium take the place of the hydrogens. And each dysprosium is like a little atomic scale magnet. It has a north pole and a south pole. That's because of what the electrons are doing around the dysprosium atom. It goes back to the electron spin, plus the particular way that the electrons run around the dysprosium atom. 
And it turns out that inside of this quantum spin ice, the little dysprosium magnets are oriented such that two point towards the middle of each tetrahedron and two point out. It's the same two in, two out rule that we have with regular water ice. That's why it's called quantum spin ice. And this new quantum vacuum state is like a new universe in which we can make magnetic monopoles. So here's how you do it. Start with one of the lowest energy configurations, which has two spins in and two spins out of each tetrahedron. And again, there are a lot of ways to do that, so it's easy to satisfy. And now I'm just gonna flip one of those magnets to be in the wrong orientation. Okay, so I flipped this one. It costs a little bit of energy to do it, but not much. And now over here in this tetrahedron, I have three north poles and one south pole. So that's a net north pole. And over here, I have three south poles pointing into this tetrahedron and one north pole. So that's a net south pole. Now, the key is, can I get that North Pole and South Pole arbitrarily far apart? If I can, then I can make magnetic monopoles rather than dipoles. And in fact, I can. All I have to do is flip spins in a continuous chain to get this South Pole arbitrarily far away from the North Pole. And that chain in the middle where I flipped all the spins, it now satisfies the ice rule of two in, two out. So once I made the first flipped spin, it didn't cost any extra energy to move this net south pole arbitrarily far away from that net north pole. And that's how you make magnetic monopoles out of quantum spin ice. It's an example of how inside of quantum materials, we can create particles that haven't yet been discovered out in the universe. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. In future episodes, we'll see how it is that we can create particles inside of quantum materials that aren't allowed to exist at all out in the natural universe.